England, a country known for its beauty, history and charm, but also for some towns that are struggling under the weight of economic decline and crime. Beneath the veneer of quaint villages and bustling cities lies another side of England, one that doesn't often make it onto the postcards. In today's video, we're counting down the 10 most depressing towns in England, looking at the reasons why these places have earned this unfortunate title. If you're interested in the real and sometimes overlooked side of the UK, stay tuned. Our first stop is Jaywick, a seaside town on the Essex coast. Jaywick is ranked as the most deprived area in England. Streets are lined with dilapidated houses, some boarded up. Frequent flooding adds to the sense of precarity. Yet, there's a community here, making the best of a difficult situation. Next, we travel north to Hartlepool, a town on the northeast coast that once thrived as a shipbuilding hub. The shipyards here built some of Britain's most impressive vessels, employing generations of local families. But those days are gone. The shipyards are silent now, replaced by empty docks and rusting cranes, monuments to a lost industry. Unemployment is high, and the town centre, dotted with boarded-up shops, reflects the economic hardship. There's a palpable sense of loss here, a feeling that Hartlepool has been left behind. But the people here are resilient, with a strong sense of community and determination to find a way forward. Our journey takes us to Grimsby, once a bustling fishing port. The aroma of fresh fish filled the air, and the docks were a hive of activity. The decline of the fishing industry hit Grimsby hard. Grand old trawlers are gone, replaced by smaller boats. The streets are eerily quiet, a far cry from its bustling past. We arrive now in Rochdale, a town just outside Manchester that seems to be caught in the shadow of its larger, more prosperous neighbour. Rochdale has faced its share of challenges, from high poverty rates to a struggling town centre. The closure of traditional industries has left its mark, and many of the shops and businesses that once lined the streets are now gone. There's a sense of frustration here, a feeling that Rochdale has been overlooked and underserved. But even in the face of adversity, local organisations are working tirelessly to support residents and create a brighter future for Rochdale. Our journey takes us next to Stoke-on-Trent, a city in the heart of England that was once synonymous with pottery. The iconic Wedgwood and Spode factories brought fame and prosperity to this region, employing generations of skilled workers. But the decline of the pottery industry, coupled with globalisation and changing consumer tastes, hit Stoke-on-Trent hard. Many of the old factories now stand silent, their chimneys no longer billowing smoke into the sky. There's a sense here of a proud past fading away, of a city struggling to find its place in a changing world. Efforts are underway to preserve the legacy of the potteries and attract new industries. We arrive now in Crawley, a town in West Sussex that was designated as a new town after World War II. The idea was to create a modern, thriving community, a beacon of hope in the post-war era. And for a while, Crawley flourished. New industries moved in, providing jobs and opportunities. But over time, Crawley has faced its share of challenges, including the decline of manufacturing and rising living costs. 
There's a sense here that the dream of the new town hasn't quite been fully realised. Our journey takes us next to Luton, a town north of London that's often associated with its busy airport. Airports can be gateways to the world, symbols of connection and opportunity. But for many in Luton, the airport feels more like a source of noise and disruption than a catalyst for prosperity. Luton has struggled with economic challenges, high unemployment and a lack of investment. There's a sense here that the town is living in the shadow of the airport, that its own identity has been overshadowed. But Luton is a diverse and resilient town with a rich history and a strong community spirit. We come now to Croydon, a borough in South London that was once seen as a booming business centre. The ambition was to create a thriving metropolis, a rival to the City of London itself. And for a while, Croydon seemed well on its way. New office blocks sprung up, attracting businesses and investment. But the 2008 financial crisis hit Croydon hard, exposing the fragility of its economic foundations. There's a feeling here that Croydon's ambition outpaced its reality, that it's become a symbol of unfulfilled potential. Our journey takes us next to Swindon, a town in southwest England that's often associated with its famous magic roundabout. Roundabouts can be confusing, disorienting places. And some might say the same about Swindon. It's a town that's seen its share of change over the years, from its railway heritage to its modern-day incarnation as a hub for technology and manufacturing. There's a feeling here that Swindon is still searching for its true identity, that it's a town of contrasts and contradictions. Our final stop takes us to Widnes, a town in Cheshire that sits on the banks of the River Mersey. Rivers can be symbols of life, of flow and renewal. But for Widnes, the river seems to mark a dividing line between the town and its industrial past. Widnes was once a major centre for chemical production, but the decline of heavy industry left its mark. The town has struggled with high unemployment, poor health outcomes and a sense of isolation. While these towns may seem depressing, they're places where real people live, work and build their communities. It's easy to label a town as depressing without acknowledging the resilience and spirit of its people. There's hope for regeneration and improvement, even in the darkest times. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.